With these large planes, they would funnel large numbers of passengers and then funnel them through large hubs. But what passengers want now is to fly nonstop to their destinations. And it turns out that the more fuel efficient planes, the leaner planes are able to do that. And that's something that has essentially killed both super jumbo jets. With four engines, of course, you're going to use more fuel than you, than you are with three or two. So they were finding ways to fly an airplane much cheaper and more efficiently. And the 7-4 didn't cut it. It's not because people don't like it. It certainly isn't because pilots don't like it. In the 80s, airlines started to do away with the luxurious lounges and replaced it with seats for increased revenue. Airlines also pack a lot more seats onto planes than they used to. That is the idea. You know, they want to get as many people into coach as possible. In 1990, Boeing 747s made up 28% of the world's passenger wide body fleet. That's down to just 2% in 2022. And despite the rise in air freight during the pandemic, in 2022, the 747 made up just 21% of the world's wide body cargo fleet, down from 71% in 1990. In fact, Pan Am clung to that plane far too long, and it's partially responsible for the airline's demise. This is the last 747, number 1,574. When we visited Boeing's Everett Washington factory, the company was putting the final touches on it before heading out to be painted and flight tested. It's an exciting emotional time for us. The 747 has been absolutely transformational, certainly to all of aviation and as part of that to, to Boeing. It laid the foundation for the Twin Isle aircraft that followed. Boeing and others have built other aircraft that can do the, the same job that the 747 can, or close to it. So the 787 Dreamliner and the Airbus A350 can fly routes that the 747 couldn't. They can go much further nonstop. The company delivered its last passenger version to Korean Air in 2017. That same year, all U.S. airlines stopped flying it. When the 747s were retired, people were really sad. United's last 747 flight from San Francisco to Hawaii had its departure covered live on television in San Francisco. It was a big deal. Boeing 747 was the most successful widebody until 2018, after Boeing's 777 took the number one slot. When you look at the 777-8F freighter and you compare it to the 747, it can carry similar to cargo levels, but with the twin engine economics. And it has over 30% reduction in fuel burn, which is great for our customers' efficiency, as well as for sustainability and the environment. Demand for cargo versions remained strong until 2020. Atlas Air has the largest fleet of 747s and will take final delivery of the last plane in early 2023. In 1977, Boeing delivered a modified 747 to NASA to use to ferry the space shuttle from its landing spot in California back to Cape Canaveral in Florida. In 1988, the 747-400 was introduced. This version had more efficient engines, longer range, and a modernized cockpit. It was the company's best-selling version. Overall, the 747 safety record has been good, but the 747 has been involved with some very tragic events. Two of the most visible were the bombing of Pan Am 103, a flight from London to New York, and the crash of TWA Flight 800 off the coast of Long Island, both of which were 747s. But the 747 was a well-designed aircraft. The more engines you have, the more backups you have to all the systems, because each engine provides the hydraulic power, the electrics, the pneumatics, uh, the air conditioning. Everything that the airplane needs comes from an engine. And when you have four of them, you've got three backups. That airplane can fly on one engine. Everything will still be working that you need to get the airplane safely back down on the ground. Boeing saw a rise in deliveries through the 1990s before its decline. The 747 was one of the most geographically widely ordered airplane in the world. For a plane of its size, it helped spur the development of the airline hub and spoke route networks that we now take for granted. But the 747 was not an airplane designed to serve shorter routes. And so as a result, that limited 
the appeal of the 747, and it also limited the usefulness of the 747. Fares, routes, and service were regulated by the federal government until the Airline Deregulation Act was enacted in 1978. This created more competition among the airlines and brought fare prices down. It also created dozens of new airlines and the expansions of smaller ones. Despite all these signs that airlines were moving away from four-engine aircraft, Airbus, Boeing's main competitor, launched its super jumbo, the A380, in 2007. The company spent billions on developing it and overtook the 747 as the world's largest commercial plane. It is a full double-decker and could be configured to seat as many as 853 passengers. But many airlines were already moving away from the 747 and the hub-and-spoke model for more efficient twin-engine aircraft. Airbus ended production of the A380 in 2021. The ending of the 747 comes at a time when the aviation industry is looking to transform itself with more fuel-efficient, environmentally-friendly technologies. Boeing's CEO recently said the company would not design a new airplane in the next decade, while the company waits for new fuel-efficient engines to be developed, since advances in engine technology doesn't yet warrant enough of a fuel cut for buyers. The replacement, essentially, for the 747, the 777X, and that's a plane that has been delayed and delayed and delayed, and it's not going to be delivered and flying for customers until at least early 2025. So the end of the 747 is kind of this turning point for the company. In the meantime, airlines looking to purchase large wide-body aircraft are turning to Boeing's 777 and Dreamliner, as well as Airbus's A350 and A330. As for the Queen of the Skies, the end of production doesn't mean you won't see her flying around anymore. There are 396 747s still flying, 311 are freight, 44 of them are passenger planes, and 41 for VIP or private service, including Virgin Orbit. Six airlines still operate the 747. Lufthansa is the largest, with 25 in its fleet. The airlines that have it will probably continue to operate it for maybe another 10 years or so, perhaps a little bit longer. I think we'll continue to see the 747 operate as a freighter for decades to come because it's a really good freight airplane. There's plenty of other ways to experience a 747 too. There are hotels, a water park, and many other aviation museums around the world that have them on display. A testament to how iconic and transformative the Queen of the Skies has been over the last several decades. The 747 is beloved in a way that most other commercial airliners are not. I remember my first 747 flight. It was on American Airlines from Kennedy to Dallas Love Field. I don't think you're going to see you know, people crying when the 777 or the 787 Dreamliner decades from now is retired. They just don't have the same emotional connection. She was my first jet. That was the first jet I ever flew. And I don't know if there's many other pilots that can say that. So I guess that's why she's my baby. And I think because I felt like if I took care of her, she'd take care of me. You could say it's the hump, it's the shape, the size, all those things. But what I think this airplane, it inspires us that we can do these amazing things. And I think that that is what has captured everybody's imagination. Why there's such an emotional attachment to this airplane that it just reminds us as human beings that we can do amazing things. Yes.